What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Knock Stiff Golf. I'm Kyle and as most of you know, I live in Anchorage, Alaska where I can't golf right now, but I can certainly talk about it. Today's episode is going to focus around Matt Kuchar at the Mayakoba Classic and how the situation with his caddy didn't pan out exactly how the caddy wanted it to. To lay out the story, this is how it took place. Matt Kuchar hasn't won in a few years. He has to have a fill-in caddy because his caddy wasn't able to caddy for him at this last minute change to his schedule in Mexico. So Matt Kuchar picks up a local whose nickname El Toucan and decides to offer him some terms for the tournament. Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but Matt Kuchar goes on to win. What takes place is an envelope is given to the caddy, El Toucan, of $5,000, basically as a thank you for doing a great job, while Matt Kuchar walks away with close to $1.3 million. So as soon as social media got a hold of this and the news, it turned into a bloodbath for Matt Kuchar, who's known as one of the nicer guys on tour. He's always giving back to charities. He's always involved in a lot of good things. And I think he's usually ranked up there as one of the nicer guys on tour, ranked by other tour players. What you have here is kind of this outrage culture really taking on a story and running with it. It'll only take you a few minutes to just go through some of the comments on the Facebook pages, Instagram, websites, forums, to just see people tearing this guy apart. Matt Kuchar's rich, he should pay more. He should pay the, the normal 10% that a caddy would get based on the results of the player. He's a millionaire, so he should make this guy's day, etc., etc. I think that's fine to say that stuff, but there's one thing that just came out yesterday, and today is Valentine's Day that I'm recording this, so it came out last night, his statement regarding the whole situation. Before we get to that, I just wanna lay it out that we are so set on jumping on the quickest headline. It was a jump to conclusions, Matt. Not knowing all the facts, not knowing both sides of the story before judging people and basically crucifying people when you only hear one side of the story. And it's been rather prevalent in the media for probably the last couple of years is this kind of, you hear something terrible about somebody and then it's a witch hunt and they're thrashing this person, dragging their name through the mud, et cetera, et cetera. So Matt Kuchar is a perfect example of this, a guy who's been kind of a shining light in terms of being a nice person and generous. And then all it takes is a caddy to say, hey, he only paid me $5,000 and he just took home 1.3 million. Matt Kuchar comes out and lays out the details of what their agreement was laid out Tuesday before the tournament started. This is from my understanding what the agreement was. If Matt Kuchar was to miss the cut, the caddy would take home $1,000 while Kuchar took home zero. If he was to make the cut, it would be $2,000. If he would finish in the top 20, it was $3,000 and in the top 10, it was $4,000 that the caddy would take home. So right there from the get-go, the caddy has guaranteed money for two days of work. It's said that he roughly would make about $200 a day as a caddy at that course. Regardless if he makes the cut or not and he works two days, let's just call it roughly, let's just say he works 10 hours and he makes a thousand bucks, so he made a hundred bucks an hour while the player takes home no money, essentially. What happens next is that Kuchar goes on to win the tournament and this is his first win in four years, like we said. We don't know a lot of details about how much input this caddy was offering him during the round, at least that I haven't found. We do know that it's not his normal caddy. It's not somebody that probably knows his tendencies, his clubs, his distances, his misses, and everything that a, a regular caddy of a player would know. So his only advantage would be knowing the course, which Kuchar has played several times from my understanding. He wins the tournament, which means that he owes this caddy 4000 thousand dollars based on their agreement. He gives him an envelope. It has 5,000 in it. And he says that was an extra thank you for a great week, essentially. It seems to be dead, but then rumor gets out that he probably talked to people and he probably let people know what he got paid. And then all of a sudden hands go up. All these PGA caddies are getting paid 10% of whatever their player makes. So they think, oh, you owe him $130,000. Well, it sounds like it goes on for a little bit. Kuch 
Kucher catches wind of what happens, Kucher's team gets a hold of the caddy at a later time and offers him an additional 15,000. I guess probably they felt like, oh, you know, I, we didn't think this was gonna be a big deal. You got paid $5,000 for being a caddy for four days, great job. The player won the tournament and has won many tournaments, so it's not necessarily based on the caddy that really won the tournament for him. That's debatable in itself. I don't know how much information was he was helping Kucher with. So essentially, Kucher was willing to give him a total of $20,000. This caddy decides to turn this down because it doesn't match what he thinks he deserves. There's a mixture of feelings that I have about this. One, I think, first off, this was an agreement between two people that we don't know everything that was said between them, so I'm not gonna jump on and, and thrash Kucher or thrash the caddy for, for what happened. It was between two adults, consenting adults, that agreed to something, and they reached an agreement. If there was no, if I win this tournament, I'll give you 10%, and they shook hands. That was not in it, from what we know. So, first off, to say that he deserves that is not accurate. He agreed to $4,000 if he finished in the top 10. That part's kind of frustrating me. Also, the second part is that Matt Kuchar, by all accounts, is a very wealthy man. He's done well on the PGA Tour. I'm sure he's he's very well set for life. A lot of people are saying that because of that, he should pay this guy more money. I don't like that. I don't like people saying that they deserve somebody else's money because they have a lot of it. I've never liked that. I don't like it in politics. I don't like it in personal life. Whatever it is, the fact that somebody has more money than you does not mean that you should have some of it because you have less. That's not how the world works. And I think most of us know that when we think about it is Kucher is a 1% of 1% golfers. He has a rare talent that very few people in the entire world have, and he's generated money off of that. So to say that he doesn't deserve it or doesn't need it all is pointless. That's what his skill has allowed him to attain. With that said, you know, I put out a thing on Instagram. I put a little post that said, did Matt Kuchar mess up? The overwhelming majority said, yes, he did, that he should have paid him more. From some standpoints, sure, he could have paid him a little bit more. Did he deserve the full 10%? I don't think so. First off, Matt Kuchar has to travel to where he's gonna play these tournaments. He has travel expenses, he has room, uh, he has food, he has all these expenses with a, a PGA player has to incur, so therefore, Granted how lavish it is, it doesn't matter. He has expenses. Some of that money will obviously go towards covering that. Whereas this caddy, being a local caddy, does not have any expenses. He did not travel there. The idea that he deserves what a traveling tour caddy would deserve is not correct in my head. Just to clear that up, that's the difference between them is there's travel, there's food, there's cars, and I don't know how much of that is covered or free or sponsored or whatever, but the difference is that a a caddy usually has to cover a lot of his own expenses when he's traveling. That's where that 10% I believe historically comes from is to help cover a lot of that stuff if the player does well. What I was saying is that on Instagram, you know, a lot of people said he made a mistake. I think it's a mistake to say that it's a mistake before you know all of the evidence that's out there. How many times have we seen in the news uh, a hoax or something go bad because somebody decides to release a story about it and then they find out the other half of the story and then they look like idiots or whatever it may be. I completely get that this is a near and dear subject for a lot of people's hearts because it's golf, which all of us love. And two, caddies are kind of like the unsung hero of golf. Like they make some really terrific calls for players. They live an incredibly interesting life for the most part. They are quirky in their own sense. And there's books written strictly just about caddies. So they're kind of like the underdogs in a way. They never get the full praise for what they do. So a lot of us kind of probably have a soft spot in our heart for caddies. So I think people feel like he was taken advantage of, he was used, therefore he only got five grand. Now, I call me crazy, but I'll take five grand for, for four days of work. I think anybody would be crazy not to. This is where we get into how I think L2 can 
made a tactical error with what he's trying to do. He let some people talk him into thinking he deserves more. That's most likely what happened. Kutcher even says he thinks he let people talk him into requesting more money. From the get-go, he knew there's that potential of Kutcher to win, yet he never made the deal that if you win, I get X amount of dollars. It was if I get top 10, I get four grand. That was agreed upon uh, up until the tournament started. So where I think he made a tactical error is now this guy is gonna be marked as the guy that's either greedy or the guy that complained about Matt Kuchar. He's not gonna have maybe the best reputation at this golf course now. Um, I could be wrong about this. Think about it if he spun it this way. He took his five grand, he could have taken the 20 grand when Kuchar offered that to him. Say he takes the 20 grand and then he's a legend around his golf course. He caddied for Matt Kuchar when he won the Mayakoba Classic. He can tell that story over over and over again to people he caddies for. People will request him strictly because he was the caddy for Matt Kuchar. He could start some sort of caddy academy where He's teaching other people how to caddy better for PGA players. I mean, there's so many different marketing things that he could have done with this. He decided to think strictly about money. And granted, those things I just listed would probably result in more money, but they're more about building a brand around his name and about what he did. Whenever you focus strictly on money in a lot of endeavors, you will find that it doesn't work out. I have found in my life that every time I've pursued strictly money, it has resulted in me either not being happy, me not following through with something, or just simply being disgusted with myself that I let money be the driving factor for what I do. With all that said, I I hope this kind of just shed some light on it. I really want you to take away a couple things is before you go judging people, stories, whatever it may be, be sure there's two sides out there before you make that judgment call. Make sure you have all the facts, do a little bit of research. I'm even being kind of hypocritical here because I'm talking about a story that I'm, I've am i read off of headlines and I've read bits and pieces of. There may be some other stuff out there that I just don't know about, so don't use me as an example of what to do. Two, realize that money is not everything. There's other ways to kind of grow yourself and grow your brand, your company, your finances in ways that aren't just focused on dollar sign. He could have gone about this a different route and I think have been much more well off. And lastly, a lot of this could have just been avoided by having a little bit more detail in their conversation. Even though Kutcher hadn't won in a while, they could have put some stipulation that if I take top five, you get 10 grand or 15 or if I win you get 20. With that agreement laid out the caddy would have had zero ground to kind of attack Kucher with because they had agreed on what would happen even if the extreme happened and won the tournament. They could have avoided this whole thing by just paying more attention to the details. I hope that kind of like wraps things up for you. Feel free to let me know in the comments if I got anything wrong, if you disagree, if you think differently than me, I'm all for just having this debate and discussing it more. I, at the end of the day, don't think Kucher's a bad guy. I think he made an agreement, that's what was set, and then when he ended up winning, you know, he felt like this guy could gets what they agreed to. Sure, he could have been more generous if he wanted to be, but the guy is generous in, in different realms of his life with charities and giving back to all sorts of people. So it's you can't just use this one example and say that he's some greedy millionaire. I appreciate you guys watching again. As always, please like, comment down below if you disagree, agree, whatever. I'd love to just talk to you guys and get your opinion on this story. And then also subscribe if you haven't already. I've been getting a lot of updates that people are clicking on this from Facebook and all sorts of things. I'm not getting the subscribe, so I gotta do something to get you guys in there because I'm gonna be releasing a lot more content coming out and hopefully it just increases in quality as time goes on. Thank you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.